Good morning, Earthlings. This is Lisa here, getting us ready for some yin, soul, and steady yoga. We'll have some movement, we'll have some yang in it. So you can see in the comments some of the gear that you can get to get yourself ready. So take a moment to take a look at that and grab some of your gear, and I'll meet you back here in a few minutes. So good morning, Earthlings. Um, why we're getting settled and you're getting your gear, I just wanted to start us off in thinking about where were you for the first Earth Day in 1970? Some of you may have been around, some of you not quite yet. So if you are able um, to recall where you were on the first Earth Day, April 22nd, 1970, Go ahead and add that in the comments and we'll see where folks were. Good morning, Mary Ellen and Ron. So where were you in 1970, um, first Earth Day, April 22nd? So as you're getting your gear situated, I'm just inviting you to Reflect on where you were for that first Earth Day and um, add that in the, the comments. All right, who's it going to be first? Maybe I'll give a prize. I'll give a plant um, to the first person who 
uh, can chime in and comment, where were you on the first Earth Day, April 22nd, 1970? Good morning, Jill. All right, I see we've got some folks on. Nobody's awake yet and ready to share where we're on April 22nd, 1970. But as you can see, I'm trying to, uh, to get myself back there. Um, I was not yet born. Um, and I, I think my mom was, uh, uh, she would have been a freshman in high school. Uh, so I'll have to ask her unless she's on here and she can tell us where was she. All right, so here we go. So who, um, <laughs> I look like Richard Simmons. Thank you, Ruth. Um, I'm, I'm trying to go for the 1970s look. If I get us in the mood here. All right, so Mary Ellen was eight years old. She thinks she was in third grade don't remember it, um, but um, as I now, I love being outside. Great, awesome. Good morning, Renee. Super. So um, many of you know that I'm kind of a a, a nature uh, is it a nature junkie? Would I call that? Um, but I'm a really big proponent of of all things nature, and I have been for a really long time. I'm gonna share with you a little poem that I had found when I was going through some of my photo albums that I wrote at some point, I'm not sure exactly when it was, but my connection for nature has always been something really strong. So um, Earth Day to me is like the, my, it's my favorite holiday um, next to my birthday. And following off of that, you have Arbor Day, which is the last Friday of April. So it's going to be this Friday, the 24th. So for me, like Earth Day and Arbor Day are kind of like my Christmas and New Year's. So, so glad to have you all here. Some folks that I've been able to practice with, um, maybe not in a while, but it's really great to be with you on this format, which is still awkward and uncomfortable for me. And um, I hope that uh, it serves all of us well, though. So as we get our gear, as we start to settle into thinking about that we just came off of Earth Day yesterday, it was the 50th anniversary of the first Earth Day in 1970, and we are heading in tomorrow to Arbor Day. And it's really, for me, this practice is about getting us in a place to really pause um, and acknowledge our place on this earth and allow us to open up to, to what's next. What way are we gonna honor this earth and take this time of what I call the, the period of great pause? Um, how do we take this time from this great period of pause to help us move in to this next phase of life here on this earth um, that we all share? So um, you, will, uh, you will hopefully be able to gather all of the gear. If you don't have exactly everything, you'll see I have a bolster, um, but if you've got a couch cushion that can serve for our, our yin portion, that's great. Um, we are also gonna do a little bit of coming up off the floor today. So a little, little, little teaser, a little yang in here. Um, so if you've got yoga blocks, you know, great, have those handy. But you know what, today I realized that I have this amazing step stool. So if you've got a step stool handy, um, you can kind of tuck that at the edge of your mat so that we can use that later. Um, and then I'm just inviting you to have like a hand towel or something so that when we come forward, you can kind of rest your forehead on it and give you some breathing room. Um, if there's anyone new to yin yoga, we're gonna start there. And it's really um, a time for us to be in a period of pause. It's uh, for us to be in time of reflection, of stillness. And so we're gonna work with a few poses today that will allow us to open up the subtle body, um, the energetic body in a gentle way. Um, if it is too much, obviously you, are responsible for yourself and listening to your body, making some adjustments. Um, and if you need some help and you discover that along the way, you can note that down in a journal 
send us a message and somebody from the teaching tribe of Namaste will, will certainly get back to you on some modifications that you can use. So let's begin in um, child's pose. Now, when I'm teaching kids, sometimes I call this acorn pose or egg pose. And so we're going to kind of be morphing our way through some butterfly poses. So I'm going to invite you to come into this pose and see if you can make that, that, that vision come to light for you of kind of cocooning, kind of hot, uh, emptying out and nestling inwards as if you were an egg from a butterfly. So here we go. We're going to settle into our yin posture today for anywhere between one to three minutes. Now, if you're playing this as the replay, you may decide that you want to take that a little bit longer. So I'm going to take my hand towel and allow myself to get a place for my forehead to settle. Your arms can be by your side. They can come long in front of your head. Or perhaps you want to bend your elbows and bring your fingertips together at the nape of your neck. So as you settle here into your egg-shaped pose, We'll be here for a few minutes. And whether it's an image of an egg or it's an image of a seed, allow yourself here to come inwards towards yourself, downwards towards the earth, and feel that energy, feel that attention shifting inwards. As I said, yin yoga allows us this time and space and structure to come inward. As you settle here, if you need to shift, you can do that, but then I invite you to come to a place of stillness. Pause the movement. Accept that in which moves with the breath. And then we challenge ourselves to stay here. I have the timer set for three minutes. And as you're here, I invite you to open your awareness to observing the state of your mind, your body, your breath. We're not trying to change it. We're being witness to those observations, to that connection inward to self. Great job. Keep allowing yourself to stay focused in this present moment opening to what is right now, right here. If you're noticing a sensation that may be challenging you, notice if you can stay with it. If you can bring some gentle compassion to it. As we take this time to go inward, we open to ourselves here. Noticing if you can open to this time of pausing with ease, with steadiness, or if there's a little resistance. And begin to allow yourself to come up. And we'll shift in to uh, being on our feet. Our legs will come long. And we're going to shift into caterpillar. So for caterpillar pose, I'm going to invite you to grab that bolster or some couch cushions or pillows, whatever it is that will serve you. Perhaps maybe again your hand towel. 
and we're going to allow the legs to be long. If you've got any issues with your knees, you may also want to roll another towel underneath the knees or some pillows underneath the knees. And then we'll allow the bolster pillow cushion, whatever you've got, to be laying on the top of the legs. So in yin yoga, it's a, it, it, we're more in a relaxed, still state. So you're going to notice that my toes are going to be turned away from me, as opposed to when we're more young, like, and the toes are back up towards the knee or towards the nose. So notice where your placement is. If you can just allow some settleness or some stillness to the toes to be away, some softness to the knees. We're going to allow ourselves just to settle here, get your seat comfortable. We're going to be folding forward, hinging at the hip, so you may find you need to elevate even more. So take some time as we start and settle into the in pose to go to an opening that feels appropriate and right for you. That's our first step. And then we can wiggle around a little bit, but we want to try to come to a place of stillness and pause. And then we're going to challenge ourselves to stay here. We're going to challenge ourselves to stay here for three minutes. So take this first bit of breath to settle in. Notice what you need to have this posture serve you. Everyone is different, so allow yourself some time to explore. Maybe you know right where you normally want to set up for this posture, or you want to adjust around. And we're starting now to come from that, that egg casing of our butterfly into our caterpillar. So as you come into this shape, you've transformed, you've morphed, you're starting to open up as we've taken the time each step of the way to relish in where that pause, where that time of getting settled and set up for the next phase of our life. As we start to come here and settle into this caterpillar, I'm going to invite you to notice the cycle of your breath. So notice how many phases, how many transition points there are in your breath. So perhaps you're noticing the phase of the upward, the inward energy of the inhale, the pranavayu, maybe you're really noticing the exhale, the downward grounding energy of the apanavayu. Perhaps you notice that there's other phases, there's other stages in your breath. Those are called the kumbhaka. It's the pause. The pause at the top of the inhale and the bottom of the exhale. Take some time to notice those periods of pause within the breath. Great, and just as we settled into that, like that, it's time to come out. We're going to next set up for our half butterfly. So taking this caterpillar and starting to make its way into opening its wings. And so as you do this, you can start with either foot forward. Um, I typically like to start on my left side, which is the yin side of the body, so that we can find that opening a little bit more in that quality of the yin on the left side of the body. 
So as we set up for this, we're going to, again, use our bolsters, our blocks, our cushions, whatever it is that we're allowing ourselves to raise the earth up to us, to have it meet us. As we open, we want to do that gently and with that support and grace of the earth. So sole of one foot is at the inside of a straight leg. And that straight leg can be off at a diagonal. Allow your hips to still be square with the short edges of your mat. And then we're gonna simply allow ourselves to open up in this forward fold again. Coming forward and we're gonna start the timer here. We're only gonna be here for a little over a minute. So take yourself into this opening of half butterfly. And imagine that butterfly beginning to open up, to spread its wings. And remember to keep the toes of the straight leg turned away from your face. Soften the knee and the ankle. Soften our jaw. Allow some opening in these spaces and these joints. As Yin allows us this time to pause and really open the connective tissue, the fascia, in ways that you may kind of move past in your typical time of stretching. Great job as you settle here, imagining yourself opening to this experience. Notice if you can come back to those phases of the breath, those stages, the inhale, and the pause, the exhale, and the pause. When the time feels right for you, allow yourself to upright. Take a moment to bring both feet back in and you can come into a cross-legged pose if you'd like or come back to the legs being straight. Just take a moment here to feel the effects of this butter, half butterfly pose on one side, comparing it to the other. All right, so let's see what happens on the other side. So being open to the experience, to being clear of whatever expectations there may be, and allowing ourselves to come in to this half butterfly pose on the other side. Maybe we need to raise up our props. Maybe it's lowering. Take some time to settle in. And then we'll add a minute plus here as well. As we come to the second side, notice if you're able to get right into it. Or if there is some resistance. job isn't to change all of it, but maybe to pause and observe the effect, what's going on. And one of my teachers always says that what we do on the yoga mat is like a microcosm of how we live life off the mat. So as we open our awareness to observing, to reflecting, Giving ourselves this time of pause, notice how that feels. I'm only challenging us to stay here for a little over a minute, so just a few more breaths, coming to that awareness, those phases of the breath, feeling the effect and the energy in each phase. Maybe there's similarities, maybe there's differences. Take some time to observe how this feels to be in this posture. 
Again, if you are watching the replay, you can always pause it and stay for as much as you'd like here, as long as it's serving you well. For us, the live stream, we're going to come up. You can set those props off to the side. And then we're going to come to a kneeling posture. As we come to kneel here, you can be on in a tiptoe pose, so curling the toes under. Perhaps you want to come to the tops of the feet. You could even be setting, sitting on the bolster or a block as well, maybe there's a couple blocks there. If this is really uncomfortable, if you've got some issues with your knees, by all means, please don't force that. Come to a seated posture. And as we come here, I want you to settle in to whatever seat you've decided to take. Feel yourself grounded, earth, as you earthling beings here in the this day after Earth Day and before Arbor Day, setting yourself here on this blue-green planet. Feel yourself moving upwards and opening as we inhale. And so if it feels comfortable for you to do so, you can take your thumbs underneath your armpits and allow yourself to lift the chest, opening on the inhale. And then notice as you exhale, draw your belly into your spine, let your feet and hips and legs get more grounded into the earth. Keep the heart lifted. So as you inhale, we keep this lift in the side body lengthening here, and then exhale, settling while keeping the lift. You can release the arms to your legs, but see if you can keep feeling the inhale, lift the heart. Keep the heart lifted as you exhale and settle into the earth. One more time, feel that heart expand, staying lifted. Pause at the top of the inhale. And then as we exhale, empty out, feel the belly get smaller, feel our, our bottom half connect deeper to the earth, keeping the heart lifted. And I'm going to invite us to come to a hands together, Anjali Mudra, palms together, fingertips together. Feel yourself here as you exhale and empty out. Find that connection from palm to palm. And as you inhale and open and lift the heart, I'm going to invite you to find a mudra where you open and expand the fingertips, like opening up to some of the spring ephemerals, wildflowers that we have out today. And as we exhale, we close the palms, ground down to the earth, come inward. Inhale, open up, fingertips expand, we heart opens, we lift the crown of the head. And as we exhale, fingers come together, root into the earth a little bit more. We'll try that a couple more times. Inhale and open and lift. Exhale, palms and fingertips together, ground down. Two more times, your pace. And then we're gonna release that. We're gonna come to a kneeling position, take one leg forward. Now, again, if you've got those blocks, you can have them or that step stool. And allow the front knee, whatever knee you chose, to be right over your ankle. And your back knee, kind of, you can slide it back a little bit more. Now, you might notice that you want to stay more in a 90 degree in the front leg and in the back leg, totally fine. And as we start to come here, start to move upwards, maybe we build some heat. So I'm going to take off a layer here. So for those of you just tuning in, we're celebrating the day after Earth Day, the day before Arbor Day. So noticing my attire might look a little different. I'm out of Namaste Teaching Tribe uniform. So coming to two more breaths. Even in the hips, lift of the heart, 
grounding of the leg. Maybe you come to that mudra that we just worked with, opening on the inhale, fingertips together on the exhale. And then allow yourself to come to a child's pose, coming to that egg-shaped pose again. And just settle here for a breath, noticing the effects of that lunge. And then when you're ready, move to the second side. Using our props that you may want to or Maybe you're open to exploring this without the prop. Allowing yourself to come to a place where our hips can be even to the short edge of our mat. Keep that lift in the chest, engagement of the low belly, especially as we exhale, hug the belly button a little bit more towards the spine, keeping the heart open. Maybe the mudra will serve you, or perhaps you are feeling, I know some of you are watching, really like to open and move those arms. Maybe you're already feeling free and open with all those butterfly poses and imagery that we had. So work with where you are to find yourself for two more breaths. And then settling when you're ready into that child's pose. Noticing what may feel now open. And where that opening is starting to shift some energy. And we're going to come to a dangling pose. So allow your feet to root underneath your hips. Your feet can come so that your feet are together, or perhaps you want to find even placed feeding, uh, feet underneath your hips. So you can take your um, rolled hands and knuckle to knuckle with your thumb and place that right in between your feet. And that might be more or less about hip distance. Those blocks can be there to serve you, to bring the earth up to you, or that step stool as well. And we're just going to work here in dangling pose. We're going to find what works for you. So the crown of your head can be lower towards the earth. Hands can come down. Or maybe if you've got any issues with higher low blood pressure um, or it's just not feeling like it's going to serve you well to be all the way forward, you can come into a half lift using your props here or resting your elbows above the knee. Allow yourself to find this dangling pose that might serve you. And I'll start the timer for one minute. And we'll go slightly over that minute. Notice how this feels for you. And now be feeling the earth strong beneath your feet. Strong legs. Open heart and open mind. And as we come here, as we start to shift, making our way to being a little bit more earthling-like from our butterfly experience, feel that connection of the earth underneath your feet. Notice what part of the breath help you to connect downward with that energy of the earth. And as you're finding this position of dangling, allowing ourselves to open, but also to go inward. The energy of inward reflection, inward direction, so that we can then open up. So 
building your feet on the ground, root down into the earth, and then on an inhale, rise up. Hands can come to the heart, to the belly, maybe by your side. Notice if the head is feeling a little dizzy, take some time to set your gaze on something that isn't moving. As we're here, we're gonna shift into our tree pose. So take some time first to just come to the tips of your toes and settle and rising up to the tips of our toes and settle. Maybe those hands coming to heart, allowing symmetry, allowing some evenness in how we distribute our weight in our hips and in the palms of our hands, drawing energy inward. Allow yourself to come to the tips if you're able Maybe reach the arms up and then exhale, hands come down, heels come down. We'll find that again, inhale, draw up to the tips of the toes, reaching the arms up, open upwards to sky and then exhale, settling back to the earth. As we come into this tree pose, it can look any variation for you. You can use a wall for support. Maybe you can use someone that's in the house with you. You can start either foot and let those toes root into the earth. Let the heel and the sole of the foot find the ankle. Hands maybe drawing into that center line of symmetry, connecting here with our heart, palms together. Maybe you're feeling that mudra that we did before, opening up the fingertips. And then finding that breath, finding those kumbhakas, those pauses. Help us settle in. Maybe we're wobbly. Maybe we're really solid and steady. Opening to your true nature, your soul experience. Maybe you want to play and on an inhale, lift the foot that's bent a little higher. Knee is out opening. So this is an opening for the hip. This is an opening for the mind to be centered, still. Opening of the heart and the humbleness that if we fall and wobble, that is okay. We can come back to it. Taking just a little bit more time here to see if you'd like to go higher above or below the knee or opening up the arms and the branches. Finding that pause wherever you are. Pause between the upward energy to Father Sky. And pause after we empty out and ground down, connecting to Mother Earth. And then when you're ready, come back down. Maybe that movement from the lifting the heels and coming to the toes works. Maybe it's a little shake out. But then come back to this mountain pose, hands at the heart. And opening up into that open mudra. And just feeling the differences here on the one side of the body as opposed to the other as we've worked into this tree pose, Vrikshasana. We'll move into the second side. So you can allow those toes to really ground down to support you to start. Finding your image, your energy, attention inward. Focusing on a drishti, a focal point, something that isn't moving to help anchor you, help you focus. So we are opening the hips here. We are grounding down. We're strengthening the core and lifting up and opening. A lot of activity going on here. So allow that focus to come into where you can pause. Where you can open to the experience a little bit more. If you're lifting the foot up the leg, I invite you to come below or above the knee, avoiding the knee. Beautiful job 
feeling yourself sturdy on the earth or maybe a little wobbly or intentionally allow yourself to open and sway and continue to be like a tree to find that resilient steadiness that soulful movement and being able to play to fall over and then come right back to your experience that is solely yours be steady in your true tree nature here, taking another breath and then making your way into mountain pose. Feel the effects of Rikshasana now that we've done it on both sides. My timer says we've done about the same time on each side, but you may be feeling a very different experience. So we'll shift back into our toes lifting the hands up, and then exhale the hands to the heart, settle the feet. This time we're gonna keep the feet planted, but inhale, soften the knees, lift the arms up, and then exhale, arch over to one side, opening yourself up, side body, intercostal here, opening. Find the breath in the side body. Feeling the heart lift, but feeling the feet ground, and then inhale, strong core, come back up, uprighting yourself and then exhale to the other side. So as we come here, we're strong, grounded into the earth, but not hypersending the knees. So keep a soft bend to the knees. Core is engaged, opening those side muscles, those obliques. We're gonna use them to upright ourselves with an inhale, strong through the core to upright, and then exhale your hands by your side or coming in to prayer position, prayer mudra, mudra. And then inhaling to the tips of your toes. If it's available to you, we're gonna stay on the tips of your toes, bend the knees and slowly come down into the squat with all the crackles and pops that exist, they are mine. And then we're gonna find ourselves into a squat pose, maybe on the block, maybe come back to that footstool, and allow yourself to have a seat here. So any positioning that will allow us to come back. We're continuing to open the hips a little bit more here, grounding into the whole of the foot. And coming to that mudra that served you of openness. Maybe there's another mudra another hand positioning that would better serve you as you come into squat pose, which can be challenging for many of us. Our hips are tend to be a place that maybe are a little less open than our heart. So take that gesture of kindness and compassion, openness from our heart space, to our hips, openness in our minds to being present to this experience and observing it, even observing our resistance. Great job. Allow yourself to come off of those props. Come all the way to your seat. And if you'd like, you can bend those uh, feet or knees, plant your feet, and then find a little windshield wiper, a little swish side to side, a little bit of your wings, your butterfly wings moving from side to side. Great job here. So we're going to find ourselves back with our bolster. We're going to come back to a posture that we did before. We're going to change it just a little bit. And we're going to come back to that half butterfly to start. So either direction you want to start with to, at first. And this time I want you to think about if you're facing the long side of your mat, allow one heel to be at the corner of your mat there and the other foot inside the inner upper thigh. This time I want you to imagine where your, or not imagine, but feel where your belly button is. And any amount that you're able, turn that belly button over towards the toes of the straight leg. 
and find back our props. And this is an option for you. I'm going to invite you to either take this more yang like more yin like we've done a little bit of standing posture, a little bit of building some heat and fire in us. So your body may be a little warmer. So a yang might, uh, style might work for you so that the toes may be a little bit back towards the knee. You can certainly have those toes away for you more yin like option to come down onto your props or even to be without your props, turning to belly button towards the straight leg. This is going to open up and stretch along the back side of the body, back of the hip, these places that we've really got into opening today. So maybe you want that support of some props. Take a little bit more time here. As we come back to this half butterfly, maybe it's more yin like, as I said, with soft toes away from you, or more yang like, opening to the experience that serves you. If it's yang, the toes are back towards the knee. Finding here, this is a little more twist. Feeling how that feels in your body. How this half butterfly pose is actually set up differently than the first time. So maybe you're having a similar experience. Great job opening yourself up to the experience that you're having in this moment. And allowing yourself to open and upright. Take some time to find some neutral. Maybe it's just crisscrossing the legs, feeling the effects of that. Or maybe for you, you're needing a little bit of movement. Your soul is saying that you need to move and twist. Honor yourself here. Being steady on matching the rhythm of your practice to your soul, to your true self. And we'll shift to the next side. So setting yourself up so that we can draw that belly button towards the straight leg. Props or no props. And we're going to come into this as well for a minute. As we come into this, allowing the twist to help us put some compression, some tension in the body. And as we come out of these twists, we allow more blood flow into the parts of the body that we've created that tension in, that where that compression may be. So as we come in this practice today of allowing ourselves to go inward into our experience so that we can go outward, so we can open up ourselves to others, to taking big action, bold steps, to honoring our earth and all that walk upon it, all that swim through it and fly around it. Great job allowing yourself to come back up, finding something that will feel like a good transition point for you. Again, maybe it's that stillness coming to something that's a little more asymmetrical. Maybe there's movements and wiggles in the neck, shoulder, hips, wrists, wherever it feels right to serve you. We're going to set up for one more posture together. It's going to be more symmetrical. So it's going to be our butterfly pose. And so in this butterfly pose, you can draw into more of a diamond shape so that you can have your legs a little bit straighter and the knees um, can be propped up with a book, a block, some cushions. 
you can draw in the soles of your feet a little bit closer into the groin area and allow again those knees to drop out onto the earth or onto black. So you have a choice, as you always do. You can either stay upright in this butterfly or you can come onto your back in Supta Baddha Kanasana, recline butterfly pose, opening up both wings. And settling ourselves in whatever will serve us into this butterfly pose. Drawing inwards, hands can come onto the body in some way, the heart or the hips. Or allow yourself to open those arms, open the heart, allow more of a heart opener as we draw the shoulders back if you're reclined. If you're sitting up, you can turn your palms up more. And as we come into this butterfly pose here, wherever you've decided to land with open wings and open heart, I want to share with you the poem that I mentioned that I found recently. I don't think it was from 1970. Well, I know it wasn't because I wasn't born. I'm not sure what year it was, but I definitely was, I think at least maybe, maybe I was in high school. And as we come into this practice and this day of transitioning between Earth Day and Arbor Day in what is a very special but awkward 2020 50th anniversary of the first Earth Day, it's a time for us really to settle into pausing and being open to the experience of really observing how we earthlings are taking care of this earth and all that's in it. So I share with you this poem that you can turn into my words or you can tune me out. But it's colors of the earth. I invite you to imagine these colors as I share this poem. Yellow. Yellow is the color of the sun. It's the color that makes you want to have fun. It's the color of a banana. It's the color of my dog named Montana. Blue. Blue is the color of the sky. It's the color, they say, that makes you cry. It's the color of a blue jay flying high. It's the color of blueberry pie. Green. Green is the color of grass. It's the color that makes you want to gasp. It's the color of a specific duck. It's the color of a four leaf clover that gives you luck. Brown. Brown is the color of the ground. It's the color that sometimes makes you want to frown. It's the color of turned, turning leaves. It's the color of winter trees. Sun, sky, grass, and ground. Yellow, blue, green, and brown. Are all special, although they don't make a sound. These are the colors you'll see all year round. So taking some time to notice in your body, in your mind, in your openness to imagine 
Where are these colors in your body? Can you place these colors somewhere within you? Maybe brown down in the legs, in the hips. Maybe green in the heart space, in the arms. And blue in the throat, shifting up towards the mind. And maybe it's yellow or white that is above the head. And so earthlings, I invite you to stay here as long as supports you or shifting into a seated posture. Sitting upright, if you were reclined, taking your time to feel your space here on the earth, Mother Earth. Feel yourself beneath the sky, Father Sky. And as you draw your palms together inward, we draw our attention, you can bow your head, honoring yourself here on this earth. And as you inhale and open yourself up, open the head, may we be open to act, to speak, to be a voice, to be a sound, a color, a vibrancy that protects this earth. Thank you so much for opening to this experience. May we move off of our mat with that same openness to observe, to go inward, but also to open and go outward. Thank you so much. And may we be connected, mind, body, and planet. Namaste. So all you amazing earthlings, thank you so much for participating here in our celebration of the transition day between Earth Day and Arbor Day. So love to hear from you and how you all are celebrating and how you are experiencing the colors and the joy of this earth. Namaste.